looking forward to doing at the Williams House is taking old recording in progress of the senator, and they can use AI to make him okay. sort of thank you hologram in the TV because they have an old TV with a knob on it, and I'm thinking that that will be like the introduction when people come, they can come into his den and watch this introductory video on the old TV of him talking to them. And it's so cool, the new um, like technology that's available. And was available a time ago. Very limited when I went up to Disney World in Florida at the Epcot. The stuff I saw in there, this was in the 80s. And some people may be coming in via Zoom. Well, they had all that money. They had all that money. They had so many things that I was going to that are still expensive, but I mean, no, what, yeah. what they I must have cost back I, I then would have just yeah. been like astronomical. Yeah. It's still expensive, but if you know, I'm thinking, I, I never you know, we've got a pretty good budget, yeah. so I, that was really one thing that I'm looking forward to building okay, I guess into we it. Do because yeah. as soon as I saw that TV, I just thought that's such a cool. Portal to the past, especially for I know. young people who never yeah. had a knob TV or anything. I have no idea what vertical and horizontal were. <laughs> right? Do you want to scribe for this? Scribe? Yeah. Once we do the brainstorming. Oh, yeah. Okay. I can help too. I can, I can help too. Okay. All right. I'll do it. Yeah. I just texted you. Ruth, it's still in Florida. We'll be very official. Yeah. Very okay. official. Oh, yeah. Okay. You yeah. Ready? Okay. Ready. Are we ready? Okay. We're ready. So, thank you for all for coming. And this is just a little workshop for Public Arts Committee. And we're really just looking for ideas and ways of thinking and things that you've seen in other places that really work. Um, you know, I, every place I go, I just got back from Idaho and I was like, Oh my god, that mural, and oh my god, that's happening, and oh, look at this thing, and I was like, oh, see, it works, it works. <laughs> um, and it just makes the city more fun. Like, it was so fun to be able to walk around, and at every corner there was something that felt right in that space and was really fun to see. So that was a little, um, it was nice to see public art working. And I just wanted, we have some new members to the public art committee, which we're very excited about. So we have Carol, who's been great, and she's been here. She's not a new member, but she's our member who has organized the bus trip for us, mm -hmm. which is April 13th, if anybody wants to come. Going to Glenstone, it's 60 bucks, and you go see Janet for that. She will take your money. I'm taking your money. Yes. And your reservation. <laughs> and then our new member, Heidi Evans. Hello. And Heidi has been all over the world doing <laughs> art things, <laughs> and we'll let her tell you a few things about that. And then Steve Walker who has also been doing the world of art in different ways, movies and sets and all over, and we're excited to have him. And then Nancy has been with us for a little while, and she's also been doing her art things all over the world. And Barry is not here, I, don't, I think he's still in Florida, and then Denise, we're not sure, she, she may join be, us. She's, she's I expect her to be okay. Okay. I think he was gonna try and see me. And okay. I'm Heidi, and I do art things all over Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I do things other places too. So, um, and it's, a, I mean, it's a matter of bringing awareness and bringing enjoyable and exciting and controversial things so that people can have a conversation in a bigger way than they have before. And some of them connect with history, some of them connect with the moment, some of them connect with just being an object. So today is really about getting ideas for public arts committee to, and any other committee, I mean, this is not just us, so it's, if something doesn't fit with us, maybe it will fit somewhere else. We've got Art and Bloom here, so maybe things that we don't think fit with us would fit with them. Um, but it's just really about 
bringing art to the community. So if there's anything that you can think of that you would, you've seen other places or you liked or you have thought of in your own mind, um, we would love to hear about it. And I was thinking art events, like things that we can do either for fundraising or just for the sake of doing it. Um, artists that you just, like somebody who you saw something somewhere and you just, it did something for you. Um, community events, so things that happen in a community and connect the community. Like for instance, one I thought of, or actually I was like looking all over the place, and one that I saw in El Paso is Chalk the Block, which every, like people will kind of buy a block of the city street for this week, and then they bring in artists to connect with these artists' blocks. So they get a piece of the street, and then they design whatever they want for that street with chalk. And it's like, I feel like that's a super fun project. So, yeah, I like that. That is really fun. Um, so I guess we'll go around, and then we would love input from anybody else who's here. And Janet and I, or anybody, can scribe. And I have notes, so maybe what I'll do is make a Google Doc after this, and we can keep. Oh, that would be good. Yeah. yeah. OK. Mm -hmm. so, <clears throat> so Tim and I will scribe. I've got um, red and green. Here's green we like, green is go. <laughs> red we don't. We don't like that idea. <laughs> so that's what that's all about. Well, I think we can just. Are, would you like to be red or green? We can just write down the ideas for now. We don't have to decide whether we like them. Yeah, that's right. That's just okay. write them down. No, color means nothing. Yeah. No, we don't want brainstorming. We can't make judgments at this point. Right. I'm so type A. Hold on. She's a very Yeah, we don't want to, we're just brainstorming. We don't want to judge the brainstorm. No this is no judgment no at this point. They can be good ideas, bad ideas, great ideas, ridiculous ideas. <laughs> And this could be the event. How's everybody feel about that? Sounds mm -hmm. good? Yeah. So this is art over here? Yeah, labor. your art. Mm -hmm. Your artist, art, that type of thing. And yours are more event fundraising. Yeah. Events. Okay. Yeah. So we have, let's just put the bus trip on because that's one of our events. Okay. We're doing a I want to talk about that too. Yeah, I'd okay. like to hear more about that. We can do that. But let's do this first. This is the fun part. Um, let's put chalk the block. And one of, um, one of the people who, Vincent, who came prior, in a prior meeting, he, he put up the idea art on the fence. Yes. And that's a fun thing we could do in a park. Yeah, yeah, so that one we should add to the event. What was Chalk the Block? Oh. oh. What is that? Chalk the Block. Oh, it Chalk the Block. So it chalk. was Chalk. Yeah. Oh, the Chalk. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, what you were just talking about. Yeah, yeah. Okay. so Chalk Absolutely. the Block, they, they buy the block, and then right. an artist yeah, comes yeah. in and does the work and the, right. it's a it's a whole event like it's like a street the street is closed for the one week and they bring in vendors to do art projects so it's art on the fence is going to go over here yes yeah. um i was also thinking of something called repair days which could connect with the historical society and it's where you learn to actually do darning or you could learn to do like you bring your silver where and we figure out how to fix it or you could do lace making or something with fabric or making buttons in this area like a way to disconnect history and art mm -hmm. and then maybe you make something with the end project or but repair days is a fun I think I would probably die but it's okay <laughs> <laughs> we're just putting your ideas out there mm -hmm. anybody else have any ideas oh. yeah I was thinking about um, oh, you need your having an artist sort of in residence that mm. could do the artwork while people, you know, from people could, from town could watch while they create something. And that would that be. Right that's you. That's me. Well, so <laughs> yeah. It's kind of a, well, it's, I have four, so it's I'm an artist do it oh, that's oh, doing so an event. So. Yeah. Maybe we don't need to, we can just put them. So what do you want to call this, please? Artist in residence? Yeah, I guess you, yeah. Is that right, Steve? 
I think that would be. Hire some residents. That's kind of fun. Yeah. And that could be even Amanda Brower's project where we're doing like the whole building with a quilted project. It was a quilting around a building. And so that could, like those type of things could be in art. Yeah. Artists and residents. That's fun. That also involves the whole community. Yeah. The one initial project we were looking at did, but I think because that was so expensive that we could, she also has smaller projects that I think are all, you know, could be a lot more affordable for us. Yeah. Amanda Browder. Yes. I don't know whether you're aware that the Children's Beach House has done a form of plein air up in Wilmington this year. Ruth Garrett is wanting to expand it down here. And when I say a form of plein air, it doesn't necessarily happen just over a couple of days. It's going to be progressive over several months. He's been asking me, for instance, for ideas of what the artists, because he has a cadre of artists that will be coming down here at no specific time or date, but they will be painting or photographing, painting or photographing, and then going back to their studios to paint. Oh, cool. And then there will be two auctions, one up in Wilmington and one down here at the Children's Beach House, probably to take place during their winter white celebration. Oh, cool. I had plein air on, but that's great that we know that that's happening. It's a little plein air. What is it? Plein air? Mm-hmm. And that's happening with who, Tony? It's his schedule. Starts with the Tulip Festival and goes on through till September. Okay. Rich Garrett? It's the Children's Beach House that who are organizing it, yeah. But, you know, they they would like any help that they can get. Yeah. So I just, just a little housekeeping thing. If you are speaking, just if you can state your name and your address. Sorry. Um, anybody else ideas? Um, I have an event, which I think I talked about a little bit at one of our meetings, but um, I have a friend who is the director of an arts organization in Buffalo, and twice a year they do, um, in the summer they call it the Midsummer Night's Draw, and in the winter they call it the Midwinter Night's Draw, and they collect a number of artists. Um, it's usually indoors, especially in the winter, um, and they each artist has a certain amount of time, I think it's an hour, and they have to complete a drawing. And then the artists donate that drawing, and then the drawings are auctioned off, and it's a fundraiser. So it's just, uh, but it, I think it was, I've been to it a couple times, and it's really fun. Um, there's cocktails involved. I mean, it's, it's that kind of event, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's so much fun. And to look over their shoulders when they're drawing, and um, I, I know there are tons of artists that we could lure in whether they'd be willing to donate but it's it gets their name if you know if if they're not selling a lot it would certainly you know just would be a nice thing to do is this one an artist or several several i think they use how many did they have um well and the other thing about that is it's um it's always fun to get like architects and other oh, people yeah. with drawing you know, like, yeah, I feel like there's a lot of people skills, who do yeah. really cool drawings yeah. that are not that traditional. Yeah, they have 36 artists at the last one, and they're just at big round tables, and, you know, they come and they bring their their pastels and their pencils and maybe some watercolors, but it's it's really fun, and I just right. really like to get to kick out of it. That's my event. I think that's, that's great. Oh, um, is that the only event? Everything else is art. That was the only event. Well, and I know we've talked before about bike racks. Like right. we had one that was semi-designed and possibly moving forward, but it mm -hmm. hasn't moved forward yet. So the, the bike racks are a fun way to get artists involved. Are we going to put that in art, art? Sure. Why not? Bike racks? Yeah. Let's just put them on. Yeah. As long as we get them on, we can decide what they are later. I and I've seen them come up periodically in the news. Yeah. I wondered where we were with that. Um, we are at a standstill with that. 
it kind of went to the like we don't have a ton of money right now not us but the city because the city was going to buy them um so you're talking about design yeah fun design mm -hmm. okay yeah. yeah and we yeah. had i have somebody i might talk to about that. yeah yeah i'm um, just off the top of my head i drive out to millsboro where i'm working on a historic house out there and there's a metal worker along Route 24 oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. who yeah. makes so these amazing things. Yeah, and and even it looks like very precise um, cut work in metal. There's one sculpture out front of a woman with her hair, and it's all like individual strands and everything. Maybe that we could look into that person. Yeah, I don't. I don't I <laughs> oh, don't worry. I had a lost car for all. Oh. oh. <laughs> Hope you found it. Well, welcome. And this is Heidi and Steve. This Hi. is Denise. Hi. And we're just giving, we're putting things in the pot for possible Hi. ideas of events or artists or art or anything that, community events that you would like to see possibly happen. I have two ideas. Okay. Um, First, uh, my daughter goes to Cape High School, mm -hmm. and she's going on to art school. She's going to go to Heidi's alma mater up in Maine, College of Art and Design. Mm -hmm. But they have a really great art department, and I think that um, we could get them to collaborate maybe mm -hmm. on an annual installation where the students make something that we all come together and come up with an idea. They've got multiple media that they can work in. They can pot, they can sew, they can work in metal, stained glass. I mean, it could really be fabulous given, you know, whatever space we have for mm -hmm. it. So that's one idea. And Cleo, my daughter, said she'd be happy to speak with the art teacher on our behalf, put in a good word for us. <laughs> and then the other idea was similar to what you were talking about, the quilting, but a little different. Um, Heidi knows about my friend Jennifer Lindsay from uh, back in Washington, D.C. She did this project for the Smithsonian um, that involved knitting, and it was called, well, crocheting. It was like the Crocheted Coral Reef Project, and it was crowdsourced um, so that people around the world followed a pattern and sent in pieces of coral using this pattern. And then it was assembled at the Smithsonian to represent a health, what a healthy wreath would look like and what a non-healthy wreath would look like. And it was just like anybody mm. could make it. Yeah. Um, and so I was thinking maybe we could have her come and help us think of something that was ecologically meaningful to hear mm -hmm. and a way for people to you know, crowdsource and make it so that you don't actually have to be an excellent artist to participate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. That'd be great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. And there's a similar person, Yevgenia Kagadovich, who I've yeah. um, talked about once before, and she does plastic bags where she processes the plastic bags, and she has workshops of people who, so like, you know, we could do three dates where people come together and just process these plastic bags, which kind of has to happen soon since we're getting rid of them. I was going to say we won't have many left. I know, oh, which I still is have a fun in my garage. Yeah, <laughs> and so uh, and then she makes these plants, plants out of them, and then they are put around. And at the end of the three months or whenever they are around, then you come and you can take one home. So you're then the caretaker of this animal plant thingy. And they're gorgeous, yeah, but they're also fun to like find and walk, like you know, come in contact with when you don't expect it. It's not like a huge sculpture; it's more tucked into the plants and area. It's kind of cool, and it's also ecological. It brings awareness. And mm -hmm. Heidi, is that a crowdsource activity, or it is? So you would actually do a workshop for that, but then there's art after it to be left behind. Okay. Mm -hmm. so Um, and there's also an artist from this area, and she has a group called Past Present, and she's connecting history. She does. She works in Philly, but she's from here. She went to Cape, 
And I've been in contact with her because she does some really cool projects connecting. Hist she did one at the Cape uh, Lighthouse area. And so that one, I think, could be a really cool project to bring her in. And she'll actually do the work. I mean, she it's almost like turnkey in the fact that she connects the dots for you. And she has a plethora of artists who are, a lot of them are friends of mine, which I was like, oh my gosh, you're working with them in Philly. And it's a really cool way of connecting history and art. Mm -hmm. And it's very historical and contemporary. So it connects those two things. So I've been talking to her just on like, oh, would what, you want what, to? What's her name? Maybe oh. we could put her down as an artist. Put past present. Mm -hmm. Past present. Yeah, that's her website. Oh, yes, past everybody's present. doing that now. Uh, it just depends on the project. So like one of them was done in a museum up outside of Philly in Mercer, and it was, um, she hired three artists to make pieces that were responses to the this um, vignettes that were happening in the museum that were old, that you know, they were antique vignettes of a moment. And so the artists responded and then the pieces lived in that museum for three months. And so it was like this like old and new happening together, you know, which I think is some of my favorite art personally, but it was just like a really cool way. And she was working with a plethora of artists, uh, art jewelers, sculptors, painters, printmakers, um, fabric makers. So. I thought it was a pretty cool way to bring in, and we have so many historical cool spots that could be enlivened by the addition for a small period of time. So that's, uh, I think mm -hmm. she's got something that we could definitely tap into. And though that was another thing with like the copper spoons or where you can actually create, like I've talked to the historical society before about, oh, we could have a, copper spoon making and then have an ice cream truck come and like, oh, how we make these spoons and then we eat the ice cream or maybe <laughs> we make the ice, I don't know, but, you know, or like a bowl maker and a, I don't know, there's so many options. Yeah, so, and we, I mean, for a metalsmith, we, we can make spoons pretty easily, so it could be kind of a cool project. But then I have to be careful not to put myself in every project. So please <laughs> stop me. <laughs> <laughs> Heidi actually can do all of these things. Are there any buildings in town here that could possibly be a wall for murals? Yeah, we do have we have the one that we did before on the bike trail. But I think okay. we should also brainstorm ways of bringing murals that I mean the walls are great and there we have somebody who offered right. one to you, yeah, right? Um, I think it's Washington Street. Is that the the little dead end street? Mm -hmm. Um across from her house. Um, Galen, can you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So right across from her house, sh there is a, a blank wall for city building. Oh, I think right. it's sort of, yeah, and it's not, I mean, it's like the size of a big garage, but it would be nice to have a nice little mural on that wall. This is um, at the end of Washington, at the, if with the bike path. Yeah, if you're going, sort of, if you're going yeah. down wa Washington and toward the bike trail, it's on the left yeah. side. Okay, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Just past the yeah, it must be in that yeah. complex, but that's a yeah, city wall. Yeah, there are a bunch of big walls, and that one, the one was done as a mural. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's and then awesome. there may be more that we haven't thought of. That, yeah. And I feel like there's other ways, like um, Milton is making these cubes, like they're five foot by five foot cubes, and it's kind of a way to enliven a park. Mm -hmm. So um, they're doing, each artist on every side is a different, person and they can, they're involving the elementary school kids and artists so there's like this you know mentoring mm -hmm. or cool thing happening between the two and then it's another way to have a wall that maybe won't be there forever but it, mm -hmm. it and it's also another way to have a small wall because paying artists for the big one is sometimes yeah. not possible. There's also um, there's some people I, I keep referring to Buffalo because that's where <laughs> that's where I was um, but they're doing murals, but they're not painting directly onto the wall of the building. They're, they're doing um, some kind of system. Um, some people are doing wheat paste, which mm. automatically, or you know, not automatically, but will erode oh, yeah, um, that's with cool. time, and, and it gives you some amazing results. But um, there's some other system that this guy at the Albright Knox started 
for their mural system so that they can be um, put up, taken down without being on a scaffolding in the full sun. It's really interesting. I can find out more about that if, if it comes up. The other thing that's sort of related to this, Deb Ewald sent me this. Um, oh, so yes. two, of my, two mm -hmm. of my suggestions are from um, people that have contacted me. Deb Ewald sent me this about uh, Salisbury is doing um, painted power boxes call for proposals. Mm -hmm. So um, <laughs> it's just like, you know, you'd want to have a little bit of control over what they're painting on the power boxes. Mm -hmm. but, and I don't know if that's something that we would want to think about, but that might be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they know. were doing that in Boise too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I, I never thought of it. And now I see the power boxes, I'm like, oh. Yeah. That would, be, that would be a good canvas. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know what you've shared already. I can't read what's okay. on the board, yeah. but um, I would like to see an element of whimsy uh, mm -hmm. come forward in some of the things that we do. Uh, I love the idea of a mythical creature or a real creature somewhere where kids could climb on it, be photographed with it, where people could be photographed with it. It could relate to the sea or, or not, but um, I'd I'd like to see something on the whimsical side. Um, the other thing that I think you touched on uh, a few minutes ago was doing something possibly with the Lewis Historical Society, and I'll go back to that idea I had two years ago that, oh, Tim, yeah. that mm -hmm. Tim knows about. I would love to have uh, some sculptural feature uh, at Chip Carpenter Square, and I have the names of the Civic Association people, but I have yet to approach them. I tried this two years ago and I didn't, I didn't, three years ago, I guess, before COVID, I didn't get anywhere. But in Asheville, North Carolina, there's a history trail and they have a number of interesting things. One of them is a park bench and on it, it's, this is sculpture, it's bronze, um, is a top hat and a cane and gloves, and there's just a little marker that that's where the Asheville Opera House was. I'd love to see something in Ship Carpenter Square, a very small, think small, bench, like is in a dugout for a baseball team, mm -hmm. um, maybe four that. feet in length, with that. a baseball glove and a baseball and a bat and a little marker that this was the, this is a historic area and was the Negro ball field. Um, I would love to see us collaborate and do something like that. Mm -hmm. And again, it yeah. isn't an elaborate sculpture. I think a, an advanced student that. could easily do that. Well, we have a, a metal sculptor who does bronze work here. I mean, Jennifer does that work, Jennifer well, that, Wagner. That would be wonderful. What I need to get from the historical, I mean, from Chick Carpenter Square Homeowners Association is the idea I don't want a life-size baseball player. I don't want to do anything in the green. I want something up near the curb where their sign is that people could just walking around or biking around Lewis stumble upon and read. I really feel very strongly that this area should be commemorated in some mm. way. I so that idea. And I, I mean, it, it sounds great. like you need a proposal. like. You know, like, uh, this is what it's going to be size-wise. This is what it's going to be. I, I could mm -hmm. write up something, but again, I, I would be guessing at the dimensions. Mm -hmm. But, but it would be straw, small and unobtrusive. One of the things I think I like walking around Lewis is that you stumble on things, mm -hmm. whether it's the cannonball house or, you know, whatever. <laughs> with yes, with the, with, without the cannonball. But um, I, I, mm -hmm. I feel strongly about this. I have talked to the... African American Heritage Association, and they were certainly in favor of it. But I'd love to see us take on something like this that would really have a place, and I think we yeah. could mobilize a lot of support for yeah. it if yeah. if we could get the Civic Association That's at Chip Carpenter Square behind us. But I, again, I'm thinking small, not gigantic. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I think that's a great idea. Do you think that's something that um, the mayor could give us a little bit of, I mean, if, if it's something that he and the city council agree with, because I just last year, I asked them if we could put one of the obelisks in exactly the space you're talking about, 
and it was an absolute no. Um, well, and they just didn't want anything to do with with it at all. Uh, so I think it would, I think it needs more than just our committee. Um, well, it would be a start. As I said, I haven't approached I the it. new Civic Association office. Well, yet. we can, yeah, but we I'd can like move to forward. Have our su yeah. You know, our yeah. support yeah. before yeah. I do that. Right I love now. that idea. I and then the Mabel. history and art is oh. a cool, I think it shouldn't all be that, but it's cool that it could be some of that. And to, to uh, build on that, when I was in Switzerland, they had a bench. You know how they do the cows or the yeah. dolphins? Like, mm -hmm. I really wouldn't want to do those, but like a bench is a physical, functional mm -hmm. object. And I, my brother and I walked all over Zurich and sat in every bench <laughs> and ate chocolate in every bench. And remember. it was like so fun. And you know, cool. some were made from scratch and some were more of a decoration and some were done by like high level artists and some were done by, you know, amateur artists, but it was really this cool, I mean, it just took, we didn't do anything else. I mean, we just walked all over Zurich and looked at the different benches, but I thought it was such a functional and fun way to incorporate. Uh, as someone who, oh, I'm sorry. It's lit up. Yeah. Yeah. Sumner Crosby, uh, 5558 Pilot Town Road. Um, just to build on that, uh, I just joined the Bicycle and Pedestrian Committee, and I had a conversation with one of the members about the fact that there aren't enough benches along the trails oh. that we already have. Mm. That would be cool. I would really like to see this yeah. happen. On the um, bike trail. And uh, just along the bike trails. But I also want to pick up, because I've been thinking what would I say if I came up and s stood up there to build on, on what you were saying? Um, uh, the idea that there'd be a whole bunch of objects around town that give us a chance to go looking for them, mm -hmm. to pick up on what you just said. Um, and some of them might be fanciful, some of them might be historical, but just something that gets us all looking around the entire community rather than the typical paths, the typical roads, whatever that we normally mm -hmm. take. It, mm -hmm. it gets us all around. Mm -hmm. oh. I love that. Like a scavenger uh, hunt, uh, kind yeah, of. Yeah. Exactly like a scavenger hunt, and it should be for all ages. Yeah. 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 I was, I was going to say, as someone who in the past did a lot of walking through this town, but now cannot walk as much or as far, the lack of benches is a problem. Mm -hmm. um, you can't go from utility pole to utility pole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> And <laughs> there could be a way to make that not just benches, but interspersed with that this whimsical or natural idea, whether it's along the bike trail, to have a series of small pieces th through the Fourth Street forest, mm -hmm. have the, the fireflies and deer and frogs and whatever uh, that would surprise people as they're walking through there. I think mm -hmm. it would be fun. Okay. And we, my understanding that uh, public art needs to go on public property, not on private property. So that limits us as far as where we can put things. Oh, but really but those, mm -hmm. those spaces along the trail or along the street are places that we could use. Mm -hmm. And the bench idea could be really fun to invigorate the community. Right, yeah. well, and it needs so lots it's of light. Needed too. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's a double. And another way to, I think, involve the community with that project would be if there was a competition, maybe, mm -hmm. so that the community could review and somehow be involved in the selection process. Mm -hmm. For sure. And there is another one that um, my friend is part of in uh, Cincinnati, and it's called Blink. And it's all a nighttime event, so it's all about light, and it's all about. And these artists make these like costumes, and they're all lit up, and they make different. There's a whole event around it. There's vendors. There's a parade. There's a party at the end. There's different places you can go in town, and you know. And I'm. I know that some of these things are. You know, Cincinnati's a much bigger town than here, but it's not that we can't start small. So mm -hmm. it's called Blink. And it just is something that we can look to as a possibility. In Baltimore, had a festival, light festival, for a number of years. I don't, I don't know if it's still going on or not. Yeah. But it was, it was an incredible event that had 
a lot of it was just um, sculptural pieces that people had done that lit up at night. Um, some of it was uh, they did some things that went out into the harbor mm -hmm. in lights. Ooh. There was a wonderful piece that um, you could walk on and it would Ooh. light mm -hmm. up as you walked mm -hmm. on it. Um, a, a variation of that I saw at Epcot years ago and I've always wanted to reproduce with the where you step on the lights and a percussion sound Ooh. happens and all different percussion sounds. And I just watched people come in and coax his eyes <laughs> and turn into children dancing <laughs> over all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it would light up. And it, it was like um, artwork, but using sound and light and, uh, you know. And people. It, it was <laughs> and, and the people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The people participated in that, you know, that mm -hmm. thing. And it was, it was constant because it's never going to be the same. So you had these kids that wanted to, like, do, you know, some really like cool drum big. stuff and... <laughs> And, but these Thank men you. coming from conferences, and I'd see them all walking in, talking together, and they'd <laughs> walk across it, and then you'd just see, we just sat there for about an hour watching people, because the smile just comes, and they realize what's going on, and all of a sudden they just start dancing all <laughs> over this. It was really a fabulous uh, event. And That'd be a cool thing to do in the winter, when everybody's kind of, oof. <laughs> Yeah, you know <laughs> they need a little light. But I like the light festival yeah. idea. Yeah. That's that's kind of fun, and it can be. Um, Maybe it could make the aurora borealis <laughs> yeah. Yeah. on a small scale. Yeah. <laughs> there was a light installation at Longwood Gardens a number of years ago that was a nighttime installation. It was just magical, um, and I think it was all LED, just strands, and you'd see them in the woods. This I don't know how many helpers this guy had to install this but it was you'd be walking along and you'd see the forces just oh, glowing it neat. was yeah. actually they did it this year as well did oh, they really it's the bill it, monroe installation what's his name uh bill monroe, bill monroe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um yeah isn't it it's it's just so magical is the only word for it really nice well and i was one of the things was like projections so like projecting on buildings rather than doing a whole mural, like having somebody create projections is an idea. And then um, I also had moving opera or moving play like as another type of art. And and then I, I sometimes think of like the white dinner or you could do like a blue dinner or whatever where people can come and invigorate a space next to the sculpture mm -hmm. or next mm -hmm. to the, you know, make the park become the art. I like that. Mm -hmm. I love those dinners. <laughs> yeah. And that was, anybody else, anybody from the audience have anything that they wanted to add? Yeah. sketched out 
the, mm -hmm. the outlines of what to do. And then he let the kids, and he, it was, he's such a good teacher. Mm -hmm. And so that that would be something that you know you'd have to get, but but to have that kind of you know engagement from the high school, the middle school, and the elementary school, sort of all in one long mural that or you know or several buildings down there, whatever. But uh, it was a it was a neat idea to mm -hmm. bring them in. Right. Yes, yeah, the way the mural arts program works in Philadelphia. That it, they go to a community and it has whatever the community wants to express and puts the input into what's going to be on this mural. And then they have a mural artist does like the outline and everybody then yeah. fills it in. Well, you were talking about numbers. having a contest <laughs> too mm -hmm. um, with all the kids at school, you know, all the art, the kids that are into art at the schools kind of submit ideas. So you get, you, you know, you get all these ideas and then people can vote. So you really get uh, a, a whole program for the kids to do artwork and then eventually, you know, some chosen or a, amalgamation of some of them and to put up on the wall as the final project would be. And we just have to be able to provide materials. Yeah, mm -hmm. because and the wall. Yeah, the wall and That's the material. That's a material. The materials. <laughs> That's something they don't have there. <laughs> yeah. Um, suggestion of an artist, uh, public arts, Sharon Dardine sent me this. It's an artist in, I think he's in Maine, Patrick Pourd, P-L-O-U-R-D-E. And this is, I, I could not get my printer to work. This is a giant eight foot pine cone, talking about whimsical. Um, but I don't think these are temporary. I think you just buy them. I don't think he does public art per se. But I like the thing. I like mm -hmm. this. It's made out of reclaimed spade shovels, which I think is just oh, really, yeah. you know, look at that. Just that's oh, yeah, that's, that's cool. Um, yeah. Sort of like, and then, I mean, in my mind, I'm still thinking temporary, just, you know, summer installations as opposed to um, anything permanent. So here's a woman um, that I worked with in Buffalo. Her name's Shasti Sudant, and she does a lot of public art. Um, this, these aren't very good representations, I apologize, but she did this one, and I think I showed a picture of this at a meeting a couple months ago. These, these pieces are like um, about eight foot high. They're made out of, they look soft, but they're, they're actually made out of metal, um, and they spin around. They're just beautiful and really colorful, which you cannot tell at all. They're more like colors like that. Um, and so who is this is Shasti Sudan. And the thing that I think is appealing about her, and I, I actually talked to Karen Bravin about this, is that she has things in storage that have been shown publicly in other places that are now maybe just needing a place to Resign hang out for a couple months. So I, I want to call her mm -hmm. um, and just see what she's got available. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's that. And, and then um, there's a mural artist in, um, I think he's in Philly now full time, um, Klaus Gabriel. He went to the MICA school um, and he's, he does these really vividly um, painted, uh, he, he does shaped canvas, but now he's also doing murals. And um, he's from, I don't think he's from Haiti, I think he's from the Dominican Republic. Really great guy, really easy to work with. And just another mural artist to 
keep in mind. Come on, that's done. And this is just, and that's all Thanks, I, that's all I got. Oh, no. Those are mine. One thing I had thought about at one point, because um, a friend of mine, Paul Daniels, who works in Baltimore, uh, does a lot of pieces that are wind-driven pieces, mm -hmm. but he also does them that float. Mm -hmm. And I kept thinking of something out in Blockhouse Pond mm -hmm. that would that would be they have to be anchored, but it would be you know it turns with the wind and mm -hmm. and um, it they reflect light. They have some mirror pieces in them, and he does all sorts of interesting pieces. And and to have something out there in the water would be kind of fun. Oh, that would be cool. I love that idea. Anybody else? All right, this is Sumner again. I am just going to throw this out as a long-term thing because I think this is a little more involved. Um, I grew up in New Haven, Connecticut, and my dad and other family members were heavily involved in developing, supporting the arts, uh, and building capacity for arts organizations. And they realized that one of the best things they could do was take advantage of the academic center at Yale and all the wonderful aspects of arts that were there. And they created an arts festival that happened for an entire week. Mm. They'd have music in the park. There, you know, there are several dramatic theaters in the area, so there would be special performances. Um, I, I'm, I'm just throwing this out there as a long-term thing. Is that yeah. I, just listening to you all speak, I think ultimately it would be really wonderful to have a chance to celebrate all that you generate, all of the different mm -hmm. aspects of art in the community. I realize it's not going to be at the scale that, that, I, that I'm describing. We don't have Yale. <laughs> no, but that's okay. There's still a lot. Yes, we yeah. have a ton. Yeah. But that's great. That's a yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah, having a week dedicated to the arts yeah. in Lewis. Or maybe start with a weekend and uh, work <laughs> our way up. But there's so many. I mean, there's theaters nearby. There's you know, there's there's theaters. There's music. It's it's yeah. And we have the Developing Arts Collaborative in Rehoboth, who is, has tons of artists, musicians. They locally who are doing original art. And then we also have many artists in the area that have been way beyond that. So that's great. It'll be for the super fun. And a lot of those, a lot of the projects I feel like we've talked about could all be integrated into that. Like Chalk the Block could be part of that week. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that'd be fun. but not doing it myself. <laughs> um, when you mentioned literature, we have the um, Lewis Historic. History Book Festival, mm -hmm. something that we could tie into. We have the Lewis um, Summer Concert Series that you could tie into. A lot of those people are, are local musicians that play. So I think there's just so much that we can do and really be creative and think out of the box and how to collaborate with other um, organizations and, and other art events. I think this is on. Yeah, it is. Okay. Hi, Suzanne Meyer, Art and Bloom co chair. Um, there are a lot of areas of intersection between the two organizations and I'm just delighted to hear you all uh, brainstorming like this. So I just wanted to say um, that we invite you to consider our resources as well and our ability to fundraise and to pull community people together as volunteers to create um, a wide spectrum of things. Yeah, it's exciting. Well, you know, just hearing you say that made me think of those beautiful walls they build that are plants. I mean, maybe we could do one of those. Where's that? One of those oh, living like, walls. Yeah, but they're designed and they have a shape. They're just 
I mean, I could yeah. find more information about them, but um, in a lot of green oh, architecture, yeah. they yeah. incorporate living walls to have that biophilic effect of being a healthful yeah. environment yeah. with filled with plants, but we could do it outside with you guys. Yeah, Lewis and Bloom has actually talked about that, and when we were in Italy, we saw a lot of that. Mm -hmm. um, the only problem is the irrigation, and we have to have irrigation yeah. to be able to do it, and you have to have one dedicated right to that wall art. So, I mean, I suppose it's normal, right. but that's all yeah. it takes. Yeah, that's cool. That would be fun. You could almost make it. Uh, do they do it where it's decorative? Like the color of the plants makes an image? or? Well, you can, but I, I think the ones that I've seen that are the most beautiful are really naturalistic and, you know, look organic, just beautiful growing, different colored textures yeah. of plants. Yeah. There was somebody on the Lewis Garden Tour, I think it was two years ago, who um, she had... Uh, done some things with moss and right on Savannah? Yes. On Savannah. Oh, I thought those were beautiful. And, you know, that, those are much smaller, but, um, you know, just another way of making art, but just with the, a different material. But, um, yeah, she had some really, really interesting, like dried, dried um, greenery, and but the moss things that were just so mm -hmm. beautiful and organic. That'd be fun. And uh, Tony Boyd Heron again. Um, I would like to see a long-term development of a sculpture trail mm -hmm. um, involving both permanent and um, temporary public art. And it seems to me that the bike trail lends itself to that so well. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And the ground on either side of the actual trail, I think, mostly belongs to the state. And we have had dealings, I'm in Warsaw in Art in Bloom, by the way, um, we've had dealings with the state before, um, and it's been successful. So I don't see that as a huge problem. But for instance, where it comes to temporary work, temporary art, you know, Art in Bloom could potentially um, pay for having concrete bases put in and then the temporary work could be rotated Yeah. Um, and there may be other areas where there could be something that's more permanent. Mm -hmm. And also we have those um, steel round circles from Vivian that she gave us the two and those also could be used in that way. Right. She took one home. Oh, she did? Okay. Um, but those, as long as the artist, and I mean we have like we have a aluminum worker around here, Nate. I mean, he does amazing things, and he's expressed interest of like, oh, I'd like to do something for that. So we could have like a, call, a rotating call for entry for the temporary ones, you know, depending on what it is. But yeah, that's a great idea, that's a sculpture idea. trail. Um, just to expand on what Tony's saying there, I, and I do not know if it's still in operation, but we have investigated in the past the Smithsonian Institute has a program where they loan their art to oh, yeah. you. <laughs> and I think that's worth investigating. Um, uh, there does have to be a place where people can, that is open, but, uh, but for a certain number of hours a week where people can come for information, but that we might be able to um, coordinate that with the history, Historical Society of the Art right here, or even the library. Um, so anyway, it's just, I think, something that's worth looking into because, again, those are loaned on a rotating basis. That'd yeah, cool. they have one of the Smithsonian traveling exhibits up at the Agricultural Museum in Dover right now. It's called Crossroads, and it's about rural communities. And so they, that's an ongoing program that they have. And Heidi curated it, right? You curated it, right? Not, Not I curated another exhibit that's up there about rural electrification in Delaware. And it's actually interesting. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Go see for yourself. <laughs> we'll report back. <laughs> Tony? I was here a moment, a minute ago, Chris Beshi, but um, I've not been at the meetings, but the meetings between the library and the um, Railroad and Bridges Society who are putting the, have put the caboose out on the, the trail there, they are also interesting in bringing some sculpture into that area. That's kind of a long range goal, but it's uh, something that has been discussed. 
<laughs> Great. Very, cool. Very, Very expensive, usually. And, um, when I divulged what I'd found, um, Pack decided that it was not worthwhile. Yeah, I kind of remember that. Uh, also, when we were looking at various uh, venues for our field trip or uh, art adventure, uh, one of the, those was the Anne Marie Sculpture Garden, which is in Calvert County. And they have the loans from the Smithsonian, too. But their, their garden uh, is funded by their county commissioners. Mm. <laughs> so they pay for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like the way you put that art adventure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, there's a cost involved in, yeah. in these traveling exhibits, particularly where insurance and so on is concerned. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. Another thing that I thought of as an ecological bend is like even, and again, this is where I have to take myself out of it, but we had an event, I had it at the gallery and then we had it at, on Rehoboth Beach where we, I took a bunch of kids and we picked up trash off the beach and then we brought it back to the gallery and we learned how to rivet and connect, cold connect, and then they made brooches out of their oh. trash and it was a super fun day. And the kids were like very proud of themselves and they looked amazing and they all had wearable art by the end of the day, but it came from, Trash. you know, <laughs> plastic and crapola on the beach. So mm -hmm. that's a fun project. Yeah. Who are interested in no. doing that. The adults love it too. Yes. Mm -hmm. so at the, when we had our plein air, air event, we had flower arranging and we thought it would be for kids and the adult, more adults <laughs> Yes, I find that too. I mean, none of us can help it, you know. Like, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I have a question. I, I guess for for Danielle and or Tony, as a children's garden out here, is there a path to it or a path through it? There's a path in it among the raised plants. There's a path throughout it. Is it stone or or slate or? to the, the mosaics that you guys have done um, and in a, when, you, when you were in Italy um, I've seen this a lot that some of the paths are actually mosaic paths uh, or not necessarily colored stone but um, just shapes and designs and they're uh, really permanent I mean you know I've seen them in villages that have been there for quite some time um, and I love those I think they're just beautiful so that's, that's another thing that um, seemed like it might be a nice collaboration mm -hmm. point. Speaking of, of wall space, there is at the net house, at the back of the net house, there is a wall space, and we have discussed the possibility of putting some sort of mosaic art there, or it could be a space for mural as well. Mm -hmm. And the other, speaking of the mosaics, if you look at the steps at Canal Front Park, that go up, if you, there are mosaics that have been done on the risers for each step so that it makes a pattern coming
piece of art mm -hmm. I saw that too. Did you see mm -hmm. that in there? Yes. And some of them were just brilliant. They do that at the flower show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not a, it's not a new concept. It's mm -hmm. been going on for a while, but I just, I saw it and it just, uh, it just knocked me out. I just thought yeah. it was a wonderful thing. And uh, I don't know exactly how we could do it. I mean, it's almost something that you might do at the, at the gallery and participate with with other people, but it, 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 I don't know. Yeah. It's an interesting. Yeah. Plan me far enough ahead. <laughs> Plan me far enough ahead. Uh, I mean, after we've done a floral exhibition more than once. Yeah. Um, and, you know, all my exhibitions, for instance, for this year were set in stone before the end of last year. Right. But it'd be interesting to not have necessarily florists, but have the master gardeners in this area. Yeah. You know, yeah, like, I mean, we have a lot of master gardeners who could, I mean, and maybe they meet with the florists to figure out how to keep the or thing the alive. Or the garden clubs. Yeah, the garden clubs yeah. is where mm -hmm. a lot of it comes from. I don't know. Yeah. I do. Yeah, I think they, they could be found. I'm, I'm open to that. <laughs> well, and, and we did a show with um, Jay Pastor and I did a show with the Art League where we took a portrait from the Art League and sent it, which I love this show. We sent it to a jeweler, an art jeweler, and then they responded to the portrait, which portrait shows so much about what a person is, and then they made a piece in response to the portrait that was part of the permanent collection of the Art League. And it was such a, it was so well I mean, people just were so excited about it because it connected these two things. So I feel like sometimes when you reach into something and then bring something new to it, it really helps connection. Well, Rehoboth Art League did that wonderful show with the writers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that wrote. We got yeah. a piece from there that was ju I just yeah. loved. They did that about your necklace, the pearl necklace, I think. Wasn't that in that exhibit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you did that one with the, it was like this huge tangle yeah. of pearls. I oh. thought somebody wrote something to go with that. Oh, I don't know. Nobody told me about it. <laughs> <laughs> May I interrupt you all? Uh, how would you all capture this idea? What, in, put in a few words about all the different Connection. Stuff. I'm sorry? Connection among art. You mean like the um, reflection? Well, I'm sorry? Reflection or response pieces? Uh, well, this particular piece Representative, rep oh. plural representation. Rep yeah, plural representation of art. Of oh, thank you. Art yeah. <laughs> okay. I can think that I can't say it. <laughs> yes, I feel like we have a lot of ideas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, and now, what are we going to do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Right, yeah, I know. But it's like we. How I become the note taker. Can you explain the art on the fence? Um, a man, Vincent, who I thought would come today, he he um, he described it to me. I didn't see it. So what I got from his description was that we would take a fence, like in um, H. P. Smith Park, or maybe in the new space that the new um, city hall is going, or something. You know. <laughs> There's like a good fence there. Um, I'm looking for good fences. And anyone from the community, so it's not about sales. Like, you know, so many art events are about sales. And so this is really about meeting artistic people in the community. So anyone who, anyone, 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 anyone who wants to bring their art, and it could be a painting, you could hang, you know, I don't know, zip tie it to the wall, I don't know, to the fence. Um, or, but it's not like you're creating a booth or whatever you know you're just create you're just bringing a representation of your work and it could be a sculpture and you're there for the day so you're talking to other people who are creative or like creative things and it's really just about kind of an introduction to who you are and the other artistic people in the community so, but it just um, it just sounded like a fun way of meeting the other artistic people I don't know if it would work as far as you know 
we could try it. Mm -hmm. And then I'm, when I was in Detroit, they had one in a um, rundown parking garage. Like it was a no longer used parking garage and the uh, artistic organization organized for artists to have either half of a floor, it wasn't very big, or they could have the whole floor and they were doing artistic things throughout the whole parking garage. I mean, we don't have that here, but. We don't have parking garages. No, we don't <laughs> like parking garages. We don't have parking garage. But, you know, just like any type of space. So. Yeah. And, th and also um, in this new space that I think the city's taking over, um, you know, that's a great place for art to be. I was in Boise last week and the hotel had these great paintings on the wall and they were all done by local artists and they had next to them like, here's the artist, here's the name, here's how much it is. And the guy working at the coffee shop was like, oh, just so you know, the whole second floor is filled with art from the community and you can go look. So that's a huge space. And I know in Rehoboth they do that where they have, I think the Art League provides the work or I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, so just having art places that's, you know, inspired. Yeah. You know, that reminded me of something that um, I wanted to bring up with the public art pieces mm -hmm. that are installed. And I don't remember if there were any, I don't remember seeing any, but I think there should be a plaque of some sort in front of each piece with a statement by the artist of what, you know, their, what their head where they were when they, you know, what yeah, this piece yeah. meant to them. Because a lot of people, when they do see stuff that is controversial or something, they think, you know, what the hell were they thinking when they <laughs> made that? <laughs> and, you know, if you, if you have a little like a thing there, that a little blurb by the artist that says what they were thinking, it, it just helps people to get into more of a discussion about whether they think that they fulfilled yeah. that you know, idea or what. But it just, it, I think it explains some of the pieces to people who might want to have a little mm -hmm. bit of explanation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we, we have plaques, metal plaques, uh, installed by the sculptures. And one is that bigger one that's more just a, Make what you think. I looking at, making you think about it, but it's mm -hmm. not specific to the sculpture. Oh. But then the smaller one, I think, was Has just one the catalog, like the artist, the dimensions, the mm -hmm. date, yeah. the title, the material. It's not a, the a statement, sort of. But I don't know. I kind of well, don't. I, I see what you're saying, but I, in a way, I, I like people to look at mm -hmm. something and just make up their, you know, kind of uh, mm -hmm. let that thought germinate, like what is this, and maybe not have it explained to them. Because, you know, working in museums, so many people will just read the label. They won't, you know, they'll, they'll look at the, sculpt the painting and then they'll go right to the label. And they spend so much time reading the labels that they don't mm -hmm. get don't the full experience the of, well, the, yeah, of the I piece. That. I so I, that. you know, uh -huh. you do either way, but uh -huh. I, I, I sort of uh, maybe fall on just the side of less uh, words, more. A note yeah. on it to get more of the artist's conception of this. Go to the go website. To this website. Yeah. Or and we had the well, QR yeah. code the on there so they code. could. Yeah. 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 yeah, I'm working on updating the website, which I kind of know. Um, and I'm not very good at it. Oh. <laughs> it's not my thing. But it's, it's going really well, but slowly. So at some point in time, we'll need you to link the, the city to the updated okay. website. Because the old one is really out of date, which okay, is fine. Right. Um, but yeah, but that's where we could say for more information on the artist and their thoughts, go here, and because I can add yeah. that immediately. Yeah, there. that would be. Yeah. That would be a good. Yeah. That would so be that cool. people get what yeah. they get out of mm -hmm. it first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, Cindy. One of the things that I'm I'm gathering from thoughts.
Well, we have what about the traffic circles but too? I like, I like yeah. that we're talking about other spaces. Yeah, and I feel yeah. like we have, I mean, we've done a lot in H.P. Smith, which is great because we don't know, I mean, it's got less traffic and mm -hmm. so it brings people there and they stumble upon it and you have every response. I mean, I remember we but put... like exploring the bike trail. Yes. Like mm -hmm. the trail or doing yeah. something here or something in block, uh, by yeah. Blockhouse Pond. I, I just think they're doing something, if we could, in the 4th Street Forest. There, there are other places that we could look at besides, besides that. In the, in the marsh between, I guess, the Queen Anne Pier and out there, there's a big open space if we could do something. But anyway, and well, the, the Delaware River and Bay Authority would like to have something <laughs> in that space. They've actually approached us as, as to it's having a, It's a wonderful, there. it's a wonderful, I mean, people, you would get traffic from the ferry and and from people mm -hmm. going to the park. Yeah, I, the, I just the problem in the need is that um, there's no access to it mm -hmm. well, on foot without crossing a road. Mm -hmm. And if the traffic is busy and they take their eyes off the road to look at whatever mm -hmm. is there, but there's a potential for an accident. And that's why we one of the reasons why we didn't do something. I well, but I mean, every highway on this in the world has a billboard that's flashing lights. I, I mean, I mean, I, 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 <laughs> you're driving down Freeman Highway, and you're you look at the um, Sentinel, you know, you're looking. I think you could go into something, but I, I just think there are other spaces that would be great for a lot of our ideas. Yeah. I so, had one more idea that I was thinking about now that. We went through a lot. I was trying to think to myself, what are we missing? And it made me think of uh, Sean Caro, who used to be um, at Fort Miles, a frustrated um, artist who had to, you know, toe the line for the Parks Department. But he did his thesis at SCAD, South Carolina Art and Design School, where using digital technology you can have you can like have some sort of um i don't know if it was a qr code or what but it shows you a space and then the work he did would be that you can look into what the place looked like in the past mm. oh, through cool. some sort of portal like i think it's through your phone and it'd be neat if we, we could do something like that, too. And he, he lives in Delaware still. He got a job out in California with, like, Pixar or something, but he's back here, um, and it would be, you know, his just desserts if he could just get back here and do what he had wanted to do for the Parks Department That'd be so cool. for us. Like, mm -hmm. we could have it be very sort of haunting and magical. Yeah. You know, like this tour of old Lewis. You know, That'd be really that cool. kind of fits in with what yeah, you were I saying know. about little the things baseball. around. If it's just like a little, a little stand or something that has yeah. a QR code and a, the name of whatever it is, and you, and it's the same view. Right, it is. So you get your phone, and and that is that what you're saying? And then yeah. you see what it looks like now, and then if you hit this, you see what it looked like. Whenever That's you cool. can get the when historic you're, photographs. When you're walking or if you're riding a bike and you come upon something and you stop and you read it or look at it, I just think that element of surprise yeah. is, is really amazing and, and difficult to quantify, but it, mm -hmm. it makes exploring fun. Also, I remember we talked about having a walking trail or whatever. This could fit into that, mm -hmm. too, very nicely, but... Um, I think the element of surprise is, mm -hmm. is wonderful. Well, and that's something Absolutely. that's going on yeah. in museums and towns, cities mostly, but um, the mystery gallery where like you have to go around the back and into the back door and then you go and there's somebody who put this piece into this thing you, and you may have to crawl or you may have to walk up or you may have, but it's like this whole magical world is happening in the place that you would never go in the museum or you would never go in the gallery. And it's, 
very surprising, but you're also like, oh, this is fun, and you know about something other people don't know about, which is always fun. <laughs> I just think, too, it opens up, you know, using my experience or my idea with the ballpark, but it opens up a conversation. It starts a dialogue. Oh, there were segregated, you know, mm -hmm. elements, but I, I think, um, well. It's a whole point of what we it's do. A, it's it's yeah. the whole point. But, but you know the other thing too, if you were walking along, uh, I keep using the 4th Street Park, it's right around the corner from me, but there are lots of people that walk there. But if you had a replica of a prehistoric bug, for example, that, you know, could have been here, you know, it would draw kids' interest. Oh, this was... I think you should be an artist, Denise. No, <laughs> yeah. No, no. <laughs> but this, you know, it, it draws interest. What's this? Well, this was prehistory. What's prehistory? Well, before we got us, you know, it. Well, there's a tax ditch there. <laughs> the, reason, the reason there's a tax ditch is it was all marsh, and they put that in there to drain the fields. So, but that's I, what it was before. So. <laughs> I I do like that idea. Back to Canal Front Park of the mural on the net house. That, I think, it would yeah. be really cool. Mm -hmm. That's one thing I, I think to add to the uh, to Canal Front Park would yeah. be Well, it's an great. ugly wall right now. Um, <laughs> so, well, but, but just and that would be a surprise, because you yeah. wouldn't see it from Until the street. Until you from the around street. to the back, yes. Mm -hmm. so, but uh, I'd like to say that I am very pleased to hear that you are entertaining ideas for art throughout the town. That was the original concept when we suggested uh, to the city that we have a, a committee for art and that we ha there were at that point guidelines for the placement of trees and benches throughout the city. There were no guidelines for public art. Art. So I think it's wonderful that you are now thinking of uh, objects of art of whatever kinds or events of art that will take place throughout the town and that will create interest and excitement throughout the town, whether it's for something permanent or temporary uh, or a different form of art than what we are used to in seeing in outdoor public. So I'd like to commend you all for uh, bringing these ideas forward. I think it's a very important step in what needs to come next. Thank you. Thanks. 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 I, um, Would you like to talk about the bus tour? Yeah. Okay. Great. I was going to say, as if we haven't been having mind-blowing <laughs> afternoon <laughs> already, uh, more opportunities. Mind-blowing. I love it. Um, what was it, Tony? Four years ago, we went to Philadelphia. Philadelphia beat that, I think. Yeah. We before, the well before COVID, anyway. Mm -hmm. Yes, the um, the committee uh, took a field trip to Philadelphia to look at public art, and it was an adventure. Uh, our vehicle had a blowout on two ninety five. <laughs> we had to get a, an Uber, and Barry had to crawl into the trunk because <laughs> there was only seated by like a fun trip. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, we we had a wonderful time. We, we saw we had a wonderful time. We yeah. did, and we saw a lot spirit. of great pieces of art, um, a great variety of art. And uh, in a city that requires new construction to devote a certain percentage of their um, money to public art for each thing they're building. So should we, anyway, we anyway. lobby for that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, it's been a, it's been a long time, and since uh, one of the purposes of this committee is education, we thought it would be fun to have. Uh, another trip to a sculpture garden in particular and to make it open to the community. And uh, I researched uh, what was available within a reasonable distance of Lewis and the committee opted for uh, Glenstone Museum 
and Garden, which is in Potomac, Maryland. And so we're going to visit there on April 13th, that's a Thursday. They will only allow us 40 tickets at a time. So we have that. And we have a bus reserve. So uh, that is $60 per person. So we'd like to let everybody know about it, sign up as soon as you can, because once we hit 40, you have to go on a wait list <laughs> or you won't go maybe. Um, but it should be a wonderful day. Uh, there's information on YouTube all about Glenstone, including a, a CBS Sunday morning did a piece mm -hmm. on it. It's, it's 20th and 21st century art. Uh, it's not everybody's cup of tea. There's a lot of walking, which is bothering me right now. And, um, uh, but they do have some assistance for uh, uh, people who need it. Uh, so anyway, if you're interested, please sign up as soon as you can. Um, you check with Janet, she's the one taking the reservations. And uh, we'd like to have a good group to go. Sure. What? Comments online. online. George Terrell says, Cape Cod and the Skyline Drive sell an audio CD to use in your vehicle, and each track on the CD tells a story for different locations in town or on the drive. Cape Cod also had a CD that tells pirate or historical stories for different stops on a map. That would be more of a cooperative project with the historical society. Just a different idea, especially good for bad weather days or disabled visitors in vehicles. Hmm. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. Yeah. That's a really good idea. It's kind of like the things you get at the Audio museum. Tour but of, yeah. Yeah. Of, of the, the town. town. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gettysburg has that too, that you can yeah. just right. drive around. Yep. I think we talked about that, a walking tour of Lewis. But it could be a driving tour, which is like kind of nice for <laughs> rainy day both. tour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Definitely yeah. sounds more historical society. But if we did it of the art, yeah. then it would be us. But if it was, it could be either. We need all these pieces of art around town. <laughs> yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, anything else on the comments? Okay, thank you. And thank you, Carol. Um, I'm excited about the bus tour. April 13th, $60. It's April 13th, but we have to have our final payment in by March 20th. So 20 days. So yeah. March. Oh. And that's what the Cape is that put as the headline. Oh, good. <laughs> Glenstone Museum bus trip payments due March 20th. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's, that's not very attractive. <laughs> Seriously? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Uh, <laughs> I think he's here. He's here. Yeah, he's here. So, it doesn't look like it's lighting up. Oh, there it is. Um, I just want to, I think Denise, you and I need to be talking more because I'm uh, very much in favor of everything you've said. The thing that really appeals to me about the spreading out is in my experience, and I spent a couple years on the planning commission, each of us has a, an understanding of a piece of the city, but few of us really understand the full breadth of the city. Yeah. And to me, that's the power of putting these objects out all throughout the city so that we all go out looking for them and in the process we learn more about the rest of our community. Mm -hmm. And Thank combining you. the historical, like like right. the thing that you were talking about with being able to see the old and the new, combining them mm -hmm. together sort of in, in a sort of interwoven map around the city to mm -hmm. see all these things would be really, yeah. really fun. I mean, it would really make this city different than well, so a lot many of people other. who come to Lewis come to the beach or go to Second Street, mm -hmm. and that's it. That's what they think it is Lewis. No. There's a lot more. Mm -hmm.
<laughs> he did not Aaron, write that. Aaron did not write that, and he's thinking of attractive ways to promote the bus trip. Good. Sorry for the bluntness that was used. <laughs> Thank Thanks, you, Aaron. Aaron. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you. <laughs> Doesn't make it fun. <laughs> um. Okay, so I feel like we have covered a lot of ground. Yeah. And so, uh, do you want to do the... Oh yeah, if you... Um, at the end, I know there's not a big representation here, but it might give yeah. some direction on, yeah. for those that were here. Yeah, what, I think that's great. Priority the dots. Are. The dots, yeah. So oh, if you just the red and walk green? Walk around the room, no, no, just dots, any dots. If there's something that you feel really strongly that the committee should you know, try to move forward on, understanding that whatever it is, it could take some time. It's yeah. not yeah. going to be overnight. Yeah. And we're really, and just so you know, we're really looking at like 2024 at this point because this year's kind of taken. So it's it's like it's a forward motion. <laughs> so yeah, wander around, ask more questions. I give you? Money, money, oh, yeah. Money. I think I I it. And also, if you have, um, if anyone has ideas that they want to add later, these are, you can either let Janet know or put them on here if you don't want to say them out loud. Janet? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I can, I can, um, I'll talk to Blue or Janelle because they're masters at it. Um, but people, check be made to the city? Or yes, okay. the city of Lewis. Yes, checks for the bus trip should be made to the city of Lewis. Um, and um, there will be a two-week comment period for anybody that was listening or is going to watch the, the video afterwards. So I'll, we'll take comments through the 15th of March. Great. Thank you. Does the the mental calendar. Do? Yes. Yeah. Does the city take Zelle or, or Venmo or any of those? No. Things? No. We can take a credit card over the phone if you want to call in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So if you want to call in, I'll Steve. Just bring your check. Okay. All right. That's easy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we hope we don't go there. We're never going there again. <laughs> if we will shut down meetings before we go there. Thank you. Thanks for the input. Okay.